And for my final research project, I created a guide of the arthropods of the Sky Islands. So what are arthropods? Arthropods are invertebrate animals that have an exoskeleton. So things like insects, arachnids, crustaceans, and centipedes. They all have segmented bodies, so very distinct parts of their bodies like separated and a lot of paired multi-jointed legs. What are insects? Insects are a class of arthropod that have three body segments, so a head, a thorax, and an abdomen, uh, two antenna, six legs, and often have a pair of wings. So why is it important to research arthropods? Arthropods provide a lot of ecosystem services, such as pollination, like the Western honeybee, pest control, like the American ruby spot dragonfly, which eats a lot of mosquitoes, waste processing, such as the sand cockroach, which helps in decomposition, and as a food source for a lot of vertebrates, such as birds, reptiles, and amphibians, like the southwestern tent caterpillar here. We also, there's a limited amount of information on arthropods. Some species are only known by name with limited info about their ecology or their behavior. And in addition, while I was looking for insect guides and arthropod guides of the Southwest, I could not find any. I could only find some for North America in general or like California, but none for the Southwest. So that is why I decided to do my research project and create a guide um, of the arthropods of the Sky Island. So here's a sample of my guide. I create, I took my field notes here and put them in the guide. I took notes on the habitat. I measured them, took notes on their general behavior and stuff, and then took some pictures. And then in addition, I did some online research to give a bit more information about habitat, food, and distinguishing features. So here are some of the arthropods that I found while traveling the Scott Islands this semester. Um, in total, I recorded 78 logs in my field notebook with a total of 20 orders and 70 to 73 species. Um, I photographed all of these and I put um, a lot of them into the guide, though I wasn't able to identify all of them to species. So here's a map of where we went during our semester. We went to a lot of the Sky Islands, including the Santa Teresa's, as well as some national parks like Saguaro National Park and also Aravaipa Canyon. And then down here is Ruby at our base camp. Each of these triangles represents um, one log that I took. So here's a graph about the different habitats in which I found these in. A lot of them were in riparian areas when we were serving springs. Mesquite scrubland is where Ruby is in, so we found a lot there too, as well as other habitats such as different forests, grasslands, and scrublands. So here's a pie chart of the different orders that I found. As you can see, we found a lot of beetles, a lot of wasps and bees, a lot of arachnids like spiders, as well as true bugs, butterf butterflies, and flies, among others. So now I'm gonna take you through three of the orders that we found and just tell you a bit about each order and one of my favorites from each. So beetles, they are defined by their hardened forewing. So it's kind of acts like a wing case um, and also strong chewing mouth parts. So here's a few that we found. And my favorite one is the green blister beetle. So blister beetles have a chemical in their blood that when they are like pushed or squashed, they secrete it and it causes blisters if in contact with the skin. This kind of beetle can be a problem with livestock because if you eat them, then it can kill a cow or a person. So they can be an issue if they're in large numbers in hay or grass. Another order is the true bugs. They are defined by their sucking mouth parts and as well as their half leathery, half membranous wings. So here you can see it's half leathery, half membranous and clear so that when they fold together, they make this triangle or diamond shape. So that's pretty distinctive of this order. And here are a few that we found. And my favorite one was the giant water bug. This is an aquatic predator that uses these grasping arms to grab prey such as um, other aquatic invertebrates and sometimes vertebrates like fish or tadpoles. Um, they then inject um, a digestive enzyme which turns the insides into juice that they can suck back up. And you can see here that this one has a bunch of eggs glued to the back. This is actually a male and the female glues the eggs onto the male's back. Then the male takes care of them and like washes them and stuff. So another order, this is actually a class, not an insect. This is the arachnid class. 
and they are defined by having only two body segments and eight legs, no antenna and no wings. So some of the species in the arachnid class are ticks, scorpions, and spiders. So my favorite one was the giant crab spider. We found a lot of these doing our wildlife camera surveys. They were in a lot of the camera boxes that we found. During the day, they can squeeze into really small cracks and they hide there during the day. And then they come out at night to hunt for other insects and other arthropods. They also, the females lay these giant egg sacs, which they guard. And they're pretty big. They're called crab spiders because they can also run sideways really fast. And they can deliver a painful bite, but they're not dangerous. And then a bonus one, the giant vinegaroon, this is also an arthropod, it is also called a whip scorpion, but it is not a whip scorpion, or it is not a scorpion. Um, it, they do have these cool claws. We didn't find a vinegaroon. We just found one of their claws, but it's still really cool. Um, so they have these little claws here. And then they're called a vinegaroon because they can spray this thing from their abdomen. They can spray a substance that is 80% acetic acid. For, for reference, vinegar is only 5% acetic acid. So you do not want to be sprayed by one of these. Um, these aren't super rare, but they're not very often seen because they're strictly nocturnal. They don't glow under black light like scorpions do, and they're not attracted to light. So it's rare to see them. They also just seal themselves in their burrows during the dry season and are only out during the wet season. So unfortunately, we weren't able to see a live one, but it was pretty cool we got to find one of their claws. So in conclusion, there are so many insects and other arthropod species in the Sky Islands that haven't even been documented. There are about 35,000 species in the Arizona insect collection and some of the ones that I found weren't present in that collection. So still new insects and arthropods are being discovered and it's important to continue researching and logging them. Uh, thank you for listening to my presentation and now I'll turn it back over to Zoe.